everyone, welcome to Bricks and Bytes. Hey, sorry about our late delay, we're trying to get on top of our tech, but it's great to have you here. We've got a whole bunch of people saying hello already, um, which is great. Thanks for coming into the comments. Um, we're really excited about bringing uh, Bricks and Bytes to you today. This is the first episode that we have here. Um, and the plan is to run these, uh, uh, these sessions every Tuesday afternoon. And we're gonna have a mix of guest speakers. We're going to play with some Lego and we're gonna look at some apps. Um, so hopefully you've got some Lego with you because we're gonna start every, um, every episode with a quick five minute frenzy. If you don't have any Lego, go grab some and come back and we'll get started in a few seconds. Um, while you're doing that, I'm gonna grab my Lego as well. Okay, so I've got myself a nice little uh, little creator box here of Lego. There's about 460 pieces in here. Um, and we are going to try a five minute frenzy challenge. So, excellent. Let's have, say a quick hello to people we've got here. We've got um, Stephanie, we've got Callum, Xavier and Zoe are here. Bailey, great to have you here. Arlo and Itzel, great to have you guys. Um, we are here to get you uh, up and running with bricks and bytes. Now we're gonna try a five minute frenzy. So have you got your Lego? There we go. I'm going to bring in, I'm gonna bring in our challenge for today. So normally it's on a piece of paper, but we don't have it here. Today's challenge in five minutes is to build a hamburger. So. Hopefully you all know what a hamburger looks like. Thanks again to um, our staff who have given us this challenge for a hamburger. So we're gonna put on a five uh, minute timer. Let me just watch this for you. Okay, so we can get started very, very soon and uh, let's do a hamburger. So got your Lego there. I've got mine. I'm gonna have a quick look at my pieces and we're gonna get started right now. Okay, five minutes on the clock. Let's give you a look at what I've got here. Okay, well, I'm gonna move this out of the way. A hamburger. So, with Lego, I always like to look at what parts we've got. We've got oh, a hamburger bun. What can we do for a hamburger bun? Um, we're gonna do the top and the bottom. Well, I'm missing a few colors here, so let's have a think about, oh, I've got some blues. Should we do a blue bun? A blue bun might be fun. Okay, let's do a blue bun. Can you imagine eating a blue hamburger? Let's get this in here. So what I'm trying to do is build the bottom and the top. Oh, look at that, we've got some plates. They might actually be more useful. All right, what else would we have in the hamburger? Let's uh, find some, um, let's find some cheese. <laughs> Okay, let's do some yellow cheese, and the cheese might, let's, um, let's make the cheese overlap a little bit. So, I'm just gonna put that there. Let's see if we've got some more cheesy parts. Oh, that's a nice cheesy part. Let's use that one instead. Here we go. If you have a favorite type of hamburger that you like to eat, how about you pop that in the comments, we can have a look at it. Hey Emily, good to have you here as well. Welcome. Ben, you and Nicole and Eleanor, fantastic to have you guys here as usual. All right, Ooh, this cheese is there on our blue bun. Let's add some, how about some lettuce? Let's, you know, try and be a little bit healthy and we'll add some lettuce in here. Okay, some green for lettuce. All right, that's two minutes down. Um, oh, someone's already made a bat with their Lego. That's impressive. Hmm, what else can we, what else can we make in our hamburger? Let's put, look, we've got a blue bun ready to go. Let's put some, I don't know, some orange, maybe some bacon or something. Oh, do we have enough orange parts? I don't know. 
let's keep going. Let's put like a big, instead of bacon, let's do like a meat patty, like a, this color. I'm trying to find out what colors I've got here. Let me get like a brownie color there. Here we go. How's that looking? Got a couple more minutes to go. What else can we use? All right. Should we do the top? No, let's put something else on. Let's 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 do another layer of another layer of some green stuff. Or maybe some gherkins. Some dark green for gherkin. Who doesn't love gherkins? Ah, oh, Tracy, great idea. Put some tomato on the burger. Um, have I got some red? Oh, I've got a very, very small bit of red. Let's mix that in with, um, let's mix that in there. Red tile, that'll do. And uh, a little bit of sauce on the side, there we go. Look at that, it's coming together. All right, we've got one minute to go, everyone. Hope your burgers are looking good. Let's have a look. All right, so it's the top of my burger. Ah. Oh. Okay, let's call that time. Let's have a look at this uh, this hamburger. Look, it's very, it's very, <laughs> it's very, very cheesy. Let me let me flip over to a different camera. Let's show you this one here. I don't know how it, I don't know how uh, satisfying this uh, blue hamburger will be, but we've got some lettuce, we've got some cheese, we've got some uh, tomatoes and some gherkins. <laughs> Oh man, five minutes does not seem like long enough uh, for Lego. Um, if you have made something awesome, please uh, share a photo in the comments or share a photo on our Facebook page. I would love to see your hamburger and, ho and uh, hopefully it looks a little bit better than this. Um, so, well done. You can pop the Lego away. So, what I want to do uh, now is to introduce a special guest. Um, so we've got a special guest, um, Kirsten Messenger from Bugs and Slugs. Now, you may have heard a little bit of commentary at the start of this video. We're having a bit of trouble with our audio. I couldn't hear her, but she, um, also I could hear her, but she couldn't hear me, but we'll be good to go uh, now. I'm going to hand over to uh, Chris and we're gonna see what she has for us today. So um, you're up. Hi guys, it's Chris from Bugs and Slugs. I hope you're really enjoying um, being locked down. I'm actually having a pretty good time. I've got a lot of animals in my house. I thought I might introduce you to little Edie. Can you see her? She is a musk lorikeet. Um, I'll see if I can hold her closer to the camera. Can we go closer to the camera? Can you see her okay? So uh, Edie is a rescue lorikeet and right now she really wants some food. So I just going to reach under my desk and get her some food. Now, Edie is not a bug because she's got bones. So right now um, she's doing something that she does have in common with bugs. She's drinking nectar. Um, Edie is a nectar feeder and that's true for a lot of bugs. Today I wanted to introduce you to a bug who um, doesn't drink nectar this bug actually uh, smells a bit like nectar but it eats leaves um, I wonder if you can guess what I'm talking about um, this bug lives in trees uh, and it's camouflaged to look like the trees that it lives in um, of course I'm talking about stick insects and I've got some stick insects right here in front of me I don't know if you can actually see them but they're just here on these branches. I'll, I'll get one off. Oh, there you go. There's two here. I didn't even realise. I'll hold them right up close to the camera. Can you see those guys there? So this one that I'm wriggling around is a female. And this one here with the nice smooth tail is a male. And these are both spiny leaf insects. But there are a lot of different species of stick insects up the back here. This is a different one altogether. This one here, if you can see it, is a crowned stick insect. Now, these guys are really easy to breed and keep and um, they're really easy to grow because they do something pretty amazing. They're parthenogenetic, which means that they can lay eggs and those eggs will hatch 
even if you didn't have a male stick insect, right? So that is pretty amazing and interesting. So I want to show you what you need to hatch your own stick insects. Um, the first thing you're going to need is some eggs. So I've got some eggs in here. I hope you can see them. They look like little seeds and that's because the stick insect camouflages those to look like seeds so the ants will come along and pick them up and take them down into their ant's nest. Um, the, the reason that happens is because an ant's nest is exactly the right environment to hatch a stick insect. So if you want to hatch some at home, you need to set up an environment that's a bit like an ant's nest. So what I've got here is just a, a takeaway container. Now, this is from our Bugs and Slugs kit that you can actually buy. It's called Hatch Your Own Stick Insect Kit. Um, but you can do this at home. You don't need to buy the kit, right? Um, so in the bottom here, I've actually got a mixture of sand, not um, beach sand, you can't use that. This is propagating sand. And I've mixed some cocoa peat into that. Now you buy that in a brick, you've got to buy the kind that doesn't have any pesticides or, sorry, not pesticides, what's the word I'm looking for, fertilisers. You want to buy the kind that doesn't have any fertilisers added. And you just mix those together with a bit of water and you make a nice moist substrate. And then what you're going to do is tip your eggs, sorry, Edie, tip your eggs onto the top of that mix and you can spread them around a bit so they're not all stuck close together. And then you're going to get a spray bottle, just any old spray bottle, as long as it's only had water in it, okay? So you don't want it to have um, hairspray in it and then put, put water in it for your stick insects. Uh, it just needs to have had water in it. And I'm just going to give that sand a spray. Did you see that? Just giving that a spray. And then I'm going to pop the lid on it. And then I'm just going to put that somewhere warm. Now, a good spot is the top of your fridge where the motor is. So it's nice and warm up there. And it's about 25 degrees and that's exactly the temperature that you want your stick insect hatchery to be so that um, your stick insects will hatch. The thing you have to worry about is letting it dry out. So once a week, you don't need to do it too often, uh, you're just going to take the lid off and spray it with some water again to make sure it doesn't dry out. Don't get it too wet. I can hear you saying, how much water, Chris? not enough to make it really soaking, right? Just a little bit of water so that it stays nice and damp in there. And then you're going to pop the lid back on and put it back on top of your fridge. Now, the questions I always get asked are how long will it take for the stick insect eggs to hatch? Now, stick insects are not like chickens. A chicken egg takes 28 days to hatch once you start incubating it. A stick insect egg can take anywhere from six months to four years. So um, the kits that Bugs and Slugs have, we actually uh, incubate the stick insect eggs for six months before we put them in the kits, and that just means that they're ready to hatch. Um, but then it still depends a little bit on how well you look after them as to how quickly they'll hatch or how slowly they'll hatch and they do have a time of year so the spiny leaf insects they love to hatch in spring so that I, I do have a few of them hatching now but in spring I'll have hundreds of them hatching um, and then as soon as they hatch I put them on some nice fresh leaves like these ones here and I make sure that they've always got fresh leaves. I don't like them to um, be eating dry leaves because they get all their moisture from the leaves. Sometimes you can give the leaves a bit of a spray and they'll drink that water. But um, really they need to get all their moisture from the nice fresh leaves. So um, Ben might have mentioned, I, I can't hear you, but you can hear me. So um I thought I might just uh, take care of a few questions that I, I know you're probably asking. So one of them is, how do you tell the males and the females apart? Well, if you didn't have a male to begin with, if your eggs were parthenon, parthenogenetic, then all of your hatchlings will be female. So that solves that problem. If you had a male, 
then the easiest way to tell them apart I'll just get this one here and show you the male hatchlings have a very smooth tail so this top of the hatchling is absolutely smooth whereas if you have a look at a female here's a female here she's got two rows of spines there the other question I get asked is what kind of leaves do they like well the good thing about stick insects is they don't tend to eat any leaves that they can't eat so up here I've got some lily pilly which is a very common native plant I've also got some uh, weeping myrtle up the back here but stick insects most of them will also eat eucalyptus or gum leaves and um, they're pretty easy to feed so uh, I reckon the only other question that people always want to know is what to keep them in and a little pop-up enclosure like this one can you see that um, just with mesh sides uh, that works pretty well but you can get similar things from um, Ikea and places like that that are just mesh pop-ups as well that they use for laundry baskets and they're really cheap um, compared to the size like they, they're really nice big size and I use them a lot as well um, well I think that's about it from me if you uh, want to hatch your own stick insects and you don't have your own eggs or you do need to buy a kit um, you can contact me at bugs and slugs which is the word bugs the letter n the word slugs um, we're on Facebook or Bugs and Slugs on uh, our website. We've got a contact form. You can just click on that and send me a message and find out um, how much a kit costs and how you get it delivered to you. Okay, that's it from me, guys. Thanks for letting me bug you. Or. Well, uh... Great. Thanks so much, Kristen. That was that was really good. It was great to hear from you. Um... I'm sorry that we had issues with our audio that we couldn't uh, talk to you live like we would we hope to, um, but that was that was fantastic. Thanks so much. Um, I hope you learned some really interesting stuff about bugs. Interesting to hear that ants' nests were a, a good place for um, for incubation for other animals. Um, but what we want to do now is uh, talking of bugs. Let's um let's have a think about how we might build a bug out of lego so if you have some lego there you can join in but i'm going to just show you my overhead camera and i'm going to um have a look at what's in uh this this mug um i've got a whole bunch of parts and i want to talk to you about building an ant now i've tried to keep it simple with parts that um, you may already have at home uh, and Try not to make it too complicated. So when I was thinking about, you know, what sort of insect could we make? Um, what sort of bug could we make? Uh, an ant seemed pretty straightforward because I had a lot of these uh, sort of black clips and black parts. And I want to start with this part here. Because thinking about an insect, it's got, it's got the head, it's got, you know, the thorax, and then it's got the abdomen. Um, and I was thinking, how can we put all these parts together? So this would be a really nice, you know, thorax for the for the insect because it has all of these little parts you can um, clip onto. So using parts like this, okay, we can add, we can create some legs. So I've got that one clip and then I've got this clip here. I'm going to put those two together and we have ourselves a leg. Now, of course, how many legs does an insect have? Hope you're all saying six. There we go. So we've made six of these legs. Next, I was thinking, you know, what can we use for, you know, an, ab an abdomen? I thought this is an old wheel that I had from, uh, from my old Lego when I was young. Um, so I was thinking that, that could be really cool. Let's see if we can clip that onto the back somehow. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to build up on the inside of that. So I'm going to use a couple of bricks here and I'm going to put them together and we're going to put that on the inside. We're going to connect that to the wheel by using this little Technic pin. Okay, so pop that in there, pop the Technic pin put that around the wrong way. Now, 
point that I want to make here is that I'm going to make sure that <laughs> you put your Lego in around the right way. So let's, what we want are those studs on top of that Lego. We want them facing out of the wheel. Okay, so we're going to put that in there. Get that in. Now, to add a clip to that, to make it clip onto the back, I'm going to use this part here. Now, you might see it's a modified tile with just a one sort of stud right in the middle, and we're going to put a little clip on that. Okay? And that will allow us to um, clip this onto the back. There we go. It's the back of the ant. Now to finish off uh, sort of this thorax, I'm just going to put a couple of, um, you know, a couple of curved pieces here so that, whoops, so that we give it a bit of shape. And then we're going to move on to the head. The head's probably the trickiest part. So thinking about an ant, we want just to build this up. So I've got this part here. It's a pretty cool part. And this one is going to clip or attach this way so we can clip it onto the front okay onto the head so let's just build the head up we've got this part here we've got a couple more of these of these sort of robot arms connecting on the front there we've got a couple of these which will add as antennae look at that now for the eyes, we want the eyes sort of on the side of the spider, or the side of the ant. So we're going to pop this here. I'm going to put our eyes on. So this bracket works really well. It sort of makes it so that we can put eyes on the side. And now we're just going to give the head a bit of shape like that. Really easy. Okay. So we're going to clip that on. And there, we have a really quick Lego ant. I'm going to flip over to this camera so maybe you can, you can see it a bit better. A Lego ant. And you can move the legs, you can move the head, move the antennas. Isn't that a bit of fun? Okay, it'd be great to see what sort of bugs you make. Let's have a look at, you know, you might have, you might not have those parts, but you might better use other parts. So let's have a look at, um, Let's have a look at this one. Whoa. This is a, sp oh, let me bring it closer to you so you can see it. This is a spider. We've got eight legs, we've got eight eyes. And again, it's only got two body parts. So you've got, you know, your body here and the abdomen. Now, I've used different types of joints. So you, if you've got lots of these sort of um, ball joints here. They work really well, so I've just stacked them in there. And I've made a little, again, an abdomen that uses those ball joints. So you can move that around. You could pose the spider in different ways. Look at that. If you don't have those parts, that's fine. You can use whatever you've got. You might want to try something different. So over the over the East Long weekend, we we try building a few different things. Here's a here's a ladybird, bit more of a mosaic type of build. It's pretty cool, isn't it? So you can make a mosaic, or or if you don't have lots of Lego, maybe you've only got Duplo. Maybe you could make. <laughs> Maybe we can make something out of uh, out of Duplo instead. Here's a butterfly that we've made out of Duplo. What I love about Duplo is it's so it's so big. So there we go. You've got lots of different ideas on building bugs. I'd love to see what you build this week. Um, post a uh, a photo or a, or even a video of you explaining your bug on our Facebook page. Um, I'd love to see what you do. So there we go. There's a quick Lego build. All right, now we get to have a bit of a play with an app. So we've 
got a bit of a bug theme um, today. We've, we've heard from Kristen from Bugs and Slugs and heard about her um, stick insects and they're fantastic. We've had a bit of a, a Lego build. Now I want to show you an app which is pretty cool. Now, if you don't like spiders, you might want to look away because this app is called Spidentify. It's an Australian app which allows you to identify all sorts of different spiders that you might find around um, around your house or around um, outside. If you're wondering, you know, what type of spider could this be? Um, we're going to have a, a sneak peek now. So I'm going to switch over to my iPad. Okay, so with Spidentify, um, you can uh, look up different types of spiders. Now, let me just make sure this is working for you. All right. Here we go. All right, so... Let me, sorry, my app is not working again. We're going to do this instead. Okay, well, let me, oh, it's upside down. Let's try this. That's better. Okay. <laughs> so again, if you're not a fan of spiders, um, maybe, maybe this isn't the best app for you, but if you do find spiders around the house, <laughs> This app's awesome. So, Spidentify has a whole bunch of different spiders in there and there's lots of great photos. Um, you can look at the field guide. If you just want to look at spiders, that's fine. So, there's a little field guide down here. And the field guide lets you search for spiders depending on your location um, or what sort of habitat you find them in. So, if I hit location and went to South Australia, I could see all the different spiders you might expect to see in South Australia. And there's a lot. I tell you, I, I didn't realize we had so many different spiders in South Australia. So that's a field guide. If you just love looking at spiders and we just want to learn what sort of spiders in different areas, that's one option for you. Another option is to use um, this tool which lets you learn about um, the spiders that you find. Now, you can't take a photo of the spider and let it scan the photo. It's not quite there yet, but this will ask you, ask you nine different questions, and by working through the questions, the, spider, uh, the app can guess what sort of spider you're after. So let's have, a look at, um, let's have a look at South Australia. So let's say I was at home, and I found a spider, and I didn't know what it was, and I open up my Spy Identify app, and we go to South Australia. We hit next. Where did I find it? Well, I wasn't in a cave. I was I was at home um, and it was inside and we're trying not to freak out. So we're having a look inside. All right, we're going to have a look indoors. Now it's going to ask me a few questions here. Was it in a web? Was it in clothes? Oh my goodness, imagine if you found a spider in clothes. Was it on the floor, on the wall, in the bath maybe? I wonder where you found a spider before. Well, we recently found a spider on the floor, so I'm just going to tap on the floor and hit next. Now it's going to ask me, you know, what sort of abdomen did it have? So it might have an oval abdomen. If I tap across, a teardrop shape, a circle, a long abdomen, a triangle one, you know, more of a tail that's stuck up like that. Or something a little bit more unusual. Well, let's say it was a long one. We found one with a long, a long abdomen. Next, it'll ask me, you know, what size and shape were the, were the spider's legs? So we could say they were very short, and it'll give me a picture of a short leg. Or maybe they were longer. Ugh. All right, let's say they were average size, average legs. And um, were they thin? Yeah, let's say they were thin legs. All right. Next, now it would tell me what sort of color was it? Well, this indoor spider was a browny sort of tan color. And I think it had, you know, a spot on it. Okay, so I'm gonna click hit next. Next, does your spider have any features that stand out? Now, 
I wonder how many of you paid really close attention to the spiders that you find at, at home. But here are some options. Large eyes, large fangs, long spinnerets. Let's say it had a very hairy body. And we're going to click next. Does your spider do any of the following things? Does it jump? Does it rear up? Does it run really quickly? Or walk really quickly? Oh, curves into a ball. I didn't get that close to it, so I'm going to say uh, none or unsure. Next, it's going to say, all right, here's a whole bunch of different spiders, which it could be. These are the different types of matching spiders. So we have some nice, friendly jumping spiders there. A wolf spider. It wasn't a wolf spider. They get quite big, though. It wasn't a huntsman. Let's have a look what other spiders are there. All right. Hmm. It was actually one of these sack spiders that we saw. So here we go. If we tap on the sack spider, it'll, look at, it'll show us different versions of it. And we can find out a little bit more. So if we tap on it, we don't want to share the information just yet. But it will tell me at the top here. So it's got a little yellow mark. So what does that tell me? So yellow means minor effect. So if we got bitten by it, it wouldn't be too bad. We wouldn't want anything in the orange or the red to bite us. Okay, this is what a female looks like. Swipe across. Slightly different versions. Okay. And then we can find out a whole bunch of different information about our spiders. There we go. So if you found a spider, you could try to identify what type of spider it is or, you know, and how dangerous it might be. So I'm going to exit back out of here. Now the app is available on Android devices and iOS devices, so Apple devices, um, on your phone or tablet. There is a fee for it, so this is about $5. But if you want to, you can also go to identify-spiders.com. This gives you, this is the website for the app, but on the website there are a bunch of different um, articles, FAQs that you can check out and also learn more about the different types of spiders. So there we go. If you do find any spiders at home, please don't get too close to them. Please don't, <laughs> please don't play with them. But if you're unsure about what type of spider it is, um, the, Ident the Spy Identify app is, a, again, a really cool app to use. So if you want to find out more about Spy Identify, you can go to that Identify Spiders um, website or you can look them up on Facebook or just search for them on, uh, on their website or on the App Store. Okay, there we go. Well, thanks so much for joining us for our very first uh, Bricks and Bytes session. Um, it's been really good um, testing out the tech with you and making sure that's all working. And we hope to um, see you all here next week. Now, to find out who our special guest is going to be and who our um, and what sort of app we're going to look at, please make sure you jump on our Facebook page and stay tuned. Um, for the parents out there, we do have a special uh, Bricks and Bytes Facebook group that you can join. And in that group, we'll be sharing um, information about apps. Um, we'll be looking more at these Lego builds that we're doing. Um, we'll also be giving access to some different coding websites and apps as well that you might want to use at home. So again, thanks so much for coming along. Um, Stay safe at home, keep your hands washed and uh, we'll see you next week for Bricks and Bites. Thank you. <coughs>